Many Christians believe that eventually a one world religion will offer the promise of peace throughout the world prior to Christ's return. To most individuals, this global umbrella of Christians coming together will seem like a wonderful thing. However, contrary to how the masses will view it, this ecumenical coming together is actually a plan to establish and set up a one world government. The Roman Catholic organization known as the Society of Jesus or the Jesuits as they are popularly called will be instrumental in making this a reality. Well, inside today's Advent message we'll see how the Jesuits have actually taken control of Protestant churches around the world. My name is Brent Winfield and I'm a Seventh-day Adventist Christian and this is the Advent message. This is the second of a two-part examination of the military arm of the Roman Catholic Church, Jesuits. The link for the Jesuit agenda in part one can be found immediately below this video in the description section. Well, friend, in order for the one world plan of the Vatican to come to fruition, all religions must come together in an ecumenical plan. This plan has seen tremendous successes Baptists and Anglican and Presbyterian and Evangelicals, Hindus and Muslims, and many others have joined the Catholic Church in coming together to pray for the environment, world peace, and a solution to the COVID-19 pandemic. Today, as part of this satanic scheme, the Protestant churches are being drawn seductively into the orbit of the Roman Catholic Church, largely through what I call the Jesuit agenda. Incredibly, while the evidence is obvious to some, the majority of proclaiming Christians are not at all aware that this is happening. So, what should we expect if we're in a time when such a system unfolds? First, Many who are once Protestant will become ecumenical and eventually assimilate with the Roman Catholic Church. Number two, second, all religions will unite in solidarity of purpose. Now, understanding the Jesuit agenda is essential if we are to understand how this worldwide deception will come about. Ever since its formation, the Catholic Papacy has been zealous and often brutal in its endeavor to establish the Kingdom of the Pope. This determination was witnessed during the time of the Inquisition, where countless millions of people died cruelly for resisting Rome. Fox's Book of Martyrs described many of these atrocities. At that time, Many true believers in Christ during the Reformation period attempted to spread the truth that God's Word was truly God's Word. And it could not be changed and kept hostage by the papacy or anyone else. These sincere Christians were so determined to serve God in truth that it was not long before the Counter-Reformation was founded in order to bring these separated brethren back to the mother of all churches. This counter-reformation was largely headed by a person named Ignatius Loyola. Loyola was found who founded a Jesuit order in the mid-1500s and who launched an all-out attack against those who dared to stand against the papacy in Rome. Hmm? The Jesuits became known as the Pope's Militia, or a secret army of the Roman Catholic Church, if you will. The Jesuits' leader has come to be known as the Black Pope, due to his being 
independent from the Roman Catholic bishops and cardinals along with him, only having to answer directly to the Pope. The Jesuit leader is even called a general and has the alleged authority to absolve persons of sins of bigamy, murder, or any harm done to others, as long as the matter is not publicly known and the cause of a scandal. The popes have also threatened many rulers who interfere with the Jesuits with excommunication. In short, friend, the Jesuits are zealous persecutors of Protestant Christians and anyone who is against the Vatican. These Jesuits take a solemn oath to destroy Protestantism and anyone who offers protection to Protestants. Now, here's an exact excerpt from the oath of a Jesuit. I'm going to quote. I furthermore promise and declare that I will, when opportunity presents itself, make and wage relentless war, secretly or openly, against all heretics, Protestants and liberals, as I am directed to do, to extirpate and exterminate them from the face of the whole earth. And I will spare neither age or sex or condition, and that I will hang, waste, boil, flay, strangle and bury alive these infamous heretics, rip up the stomachs and wombs of their women, and crush their infants' heads against the walls in order to annihilate forever their execrable race. Now when the same cannot be done openly, I will secretly use the poison cup, strangulating cord, steel of the poniard or the leaden bullet, regardless of the honor, rank, dignity, or authority of the person or persons, whatever may be their condition in life, either public or private, as I, at any time, may be directed so to do by any agent of the Pope or superior of the brother, Brotherhood of the Holy Faith of the Society of Jesus." End quote. So, Saint, you can now see if the Jesuit were commissioned by the Pope, whatever they took to end the Protestant Reformation, while most Christians think that the Counter-Reformation is a thing of the past, because we're not seeing inquisitions today. This movement continues and with renewed effort throughout various avenues of the Protestant, Protestant Church. And it is more insidious today than the inquisitions because now it has infiltrated Christianity and is being disguised as a new Christianity. But disguised or not, it is a Jesuit agenda, and it is bringing ecumenism and a world, one world religion. And at the same time, it is attempting to destroy the message that so many died for, which is the message that Jesus Christ is not found in a wafer and a sip of fermented wine, and to be re-crucified day after day. But Christ has died once and for the sins of man, and offer salvation that is an entirely free gift, unearned to those who believe in him. Amen. Well, as I mentioned before, the Jesuits was first formed in the year 1834 by Ignatius Loyola, and after a serious injury in the military and during a lengthy rehabilitation, Loyola turned his focus from military enthusiasm to spiritual fanaticism. Loyola assumed the name and office of Knight of the Virgin Mary, seeing himself as Mary's favorite. Loyola wanted to start a new order, Society of Jesus or the Jesuits. And so he presented the idea to the Pope. He told the Pope that the idea had been inspired by heavenly revelations. Now at first the Pope hesitated, but when Loyola added a fourth vow in addition to the regular vows of poverty and chastity and obedience. Um, well, he, he would promise to do whatever the Pope wanted and go wherever the Pope wanted him to go. The Pope agreed and sent the new order out to invade the world. 
While monks of other religious orders sought to separate themselves from the world, the Jesuit went out into the world and obeyed whatever command the Pope gave. Often this was to win the world with the sword. No violent act was withheld if the order came from the Jesuit general. Well, after a while, the Jesuits entered the education system, especially that of the Protestants. The Jesuit maxim, on, maxim was, give us the education of the children this day, and the next generation will be ours. One Jesuit even boasted that the Jesuits were successfully able to imitate preachers, Protestant preachers. They used trickery and deception to become all things to all men. However, by 1773, the order was abolished because of their horrible reputation for bloodiness and deception and immorality. But they were fully reinstated in 1844 by Pope Pius. Even by this time, the influence and infiltration into the United States by the Jesuits was significant. So, question. What is the Jesuit agenda today? Well, I'm not saying that Jesuits today are murdering Protestants if they don't convert to Catholicism. What I am saying is that the determination and efforts to convert Protestants back to the Mother Church still exist. Basically, while the methods may have changed, the plan and objectives have not changed. Here's a good question. If the methods of converting lost and prodigal souls back to Rome have changed, what is the method to accomplish these goals today? Hmm? Well, their answer is, it is largely through what is called Jesuit spirituality. See, at their very roots, Jesuits are proponents of mystical prayer practices. The founder of the Jesuit, Loyola, created spiritual exercises that incorporated mysticism. Today, millions of people worldwide practice the spiritual exercises of Ignatius Loyola. The examen is a simple but powerful technique of prayerful reflection. Experience alone does not teach us much. It is when we reflect on our experience that we really begin to learn. The examen is a practice developed by St. Ignatius of Loyola around 500 years ago. It can help us see God's hand at work in our daily lived experience. It is a simple prayer that has the capacity to transform our lives by helping us become more aware. It is best prayed daily. Step 1. Become aware of God's presence. Find a place where you can spend some uninterrupted time. Take a few quiet, slow breaths. Quiet your mind and calm your body and gently relax into an awareness of God's presence. Step two, review the day with gratitude. Take some time to think back over the day that has just passed. Ask God to show you the day through God's eyes. Step three, review the day again and notice your feelings. Notice moments when you felt fully alive, times when you felt at peace, joyful, happy, comforted, whole, connected, challenged, your best self. Step four, choose one feature of the day and pray from it. Choose one feature of the day and use it in your prayer. Step five, look forward to tomorrow with hope. Look forward to tomorrow. Ask God to give you light for tomorrow's challenges. Pay attention to the feelings that surface as you survey what's coming up. The more you practice the examen, the easier and clearer it will become, shedding light on the path God has laid out before you. If Protestants can be convinced to practice mysticism, that is, contemplative prayer, this conditions them to begin embracing Rome and even all religions. Contemplative prayer is one of the keys to well Protestants to ecumenism and then to Romanism. 
It's important to understand, friend, that mysticism is the bridge that unites all the religions of the world. In order to unite them, there would need to be a uniting, a common denominator, so to speak. And that common uniting denominator is medium through mysticism, contemplative prayer. The satanic phenomenon of contemplative prayer is like a tidal wave that is sweeping over all, well most, Protestant churches. The thing to understand is practitioners of contemplative prayer actually use meditation techniques similar to those practiced by Hindus and yoga and other types of Eastern religions. Contemplative spirituality brings people of varying religions and beliefs into one place. This means that an individual from any religion can use contemplative prayer to whatever God they want on, in order to get the results that they seek. This evil system of imagining is called syncretism. It's a melding of the religions for one world religion. Now here's an actual notice that was sent out. I quote, listen to this. Interfaith meditation session scheduled for spring in Natural Awakenings, April 2013 edition. The spring sessions will be co-led by religious leaders from diverse faith backgrounds and individuals of all faiths and backgrounds may participate. The IMI Interfaith Meditation Internet Initiative is not aligned with any politics or single religion. Its primary intention is to facilitate ongoing transformation across religious lines based upon the core principle that every person, regardless of race, color, nationality, gender, sexual orientation, or economic status, can grow spiritually and realize a direct connection with the gods of one own understanding. Sessions, sessions were to be held in churches, synagogues, mosques, temples, universities, and community centers." End quote. Saints of God, I want you to take a serious look around you and see who is currently promoting the mysticism of contemplative prayer. Incidentally, when I say all the religions of the world are uniting, I include the New Age movement, perhaps one of the largest religions in the world today. New Agers believe that in order to enter into an age of enlightenment or the age of Aquarius, the world needs to become vibrationally sympathetic. That's what they call it. Meaning that a sufficient mass of people will need to engage in mystical or contemplative prayer. In addition to the church, Jesuit influence in the world today is everywhere in the business world, in education, in politics, and in government. According to the book, Contemplatives in Action, the Jesuit way, check it out. There are over one million people right now living in the United States who have graduated from Jesuit high schools, colleges, and universities. Perhaps the best way to understand the Jesuit agenda that undermines Biblical Christianity is to recognize the move towards a so-called social gospel that unites the religion of the world for the cause of peace. Like mysticism, this social gospel, like the ecumenical plan, is a vehicle through which all religions are to be united. Now who would have believed this could happen to the Protestant church hmm? in our time? But we have already been warned in scripture that Satan's ministers are transformed as the ministers of righteousness. See 2 Corinthians 11. The emerging church movement has been used by Satan to quickly bring about this worldwide ecumenical deception by introducing mystical experiences and the social gospel to an entire generation of young people. But the Word of God says, listen, I quote, 
Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For you were sometimes darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. Walk as the children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And having no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. See then, you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Ephesians 5, 6 11. Saints of God, I implore you not to be fooled by anyone who promotes contemplative prayer. This is an evil concept that is being pushed to deceive even the very elect. Okay? Saint of God, if you're being blessed by these Advent messages, I invite you to prayerfully consider donating any amount to the ministry. Christ is coming soon, and I'm committed to spreading that good news. You may make your donation by using PayPal. The PayPal link appears immediately below this video. And I thank you, and may God richly bless you as you assist in this work. May God bless you. And always remember, God loves you. Yes, he really, really does love you.